millions of people died in World War I. Tens of millions were involved, the life of hundreds of millions was changed, and the billions that live today live in a different world made by World War I. Still individuals fought in the war, a lot of them with millions dead, a lot maimed or missing, unsung heroes or saluted ones but still dead. People had a lot of great stories and today we're going to see a few of them. Australian Private Billy Singh sniped at least 150 Turkish soldiers at Gallipoli and he got the nickname Murderer. Today Australians visit Turkey and Turkish people visit Australia. Living in peacetime makes wartime decisions and what made the hero look really strange. For example, US Sergeant Alvin York was the most decorated American soldier. In the Meuse Argonne Offensive of 1918, he led an attack on a machine gun nest, killed 20 enemies and captured 132. He was later awarded the Medal of Honor. Many many weapons were also captured. During a patrol over Italy in March 1918, Lieutenant Alan Girard's sap with camel was hit 160 times. Still, he won. The youngest recipient of the Victoria Cross was a boy, John Cornwall, only 16 years old. He stayed at his post for over an hour despite receiving a fatal wound. There are heroes on all sides. Richthofen remains perhaps the most widely known fighter pilot of all time. He was the most successful fighter pilot of the entire war. He fought on the German side and Manfred Albrecht Friar von Richthofen, also known as the Red Baron, shot down 80 planes more than any other World War I pilot. Unfortunately, he died after being shot down near Amiens. Francis René Fonck was the Allies' most successful fighter pilot, shooting down 75 enemy planes, but he doesn't have a movie made after him, not even a comedy. French second lieutenant Alfred Joubert wrote in his diary about World War I just before he died that Humanity is mad. It must be mad to do what it's doing. What a massacre. What scenes of horror and carnage. I cannot find words to translate my impressions. Hell cannot be so terrible. Men are mad. During World War I, 634 Victoria Crosses were awarded. 166 of those were awarded posthumously. Herbert Hoover, who will become president in 1929, was appointed US Food Administrator. His job was to provide food to the US Army and its allies. To do so, he encouraged people to plant victory gardens or personal gardens. More than 20 million Americans planted their own gardens and food consumption in the US decreased by 15%. British author T.E. Lawrence, also known as Lawrence of Arabia, worked for Allied intelligence in the Middle East. He also led an Arab uprising against the Turks and wrote about it in his book The Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Hello girls, as American soldiers call them, were American women who served as telephone operators for Pershing's forces in Europe. The women were fluent in French and English and were specially trained by the American Telephone and Telegraph Company. AT&T. Only in 1979, the US Army finally gave war medals and veteran benefits to the few Hello Girls that were still alive. Millions of soldiers suffered shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder due to the horrors of trench warfare. Shell shocked men often had uncontrollable diarrhea, stopped speaking, couldn't sleep, twitched and whimpered for hours. While some soldiers did recover, others suffered for the rest of their lives. Edith Cavell was a British nurse who helped 200 Allied soldiers escape from German-occupied Belgium. The Germans arrested her and she was executed by a German fire squad. Her death wasn't in vain, it helped turn global opinion against Germany. That was accentuated by the fact that Edith Cavell saved soldiers on all sides. Anibal Miais was the most decorated Portuguese soldier of the war. He single-handedly withstood two German assaults. With his resistance and rate of fire during a German ambush, he convinced the enemy that they were fighting up against a fortified unit rather than one single soldier. 1914's Christmas Eve is famous and will forever be. Soldiers on both sides of the Western Front sang carols to each other and on Christmas Day troops along two-thirds of the front declared a truce. In some places the truce lasted a week. A year later, sentries on both sides were ordered to shoot down anybody that would try the same thing. The performance wasn't to be repeated even though soldiers wanted to. Margaret Zale, also known as 
Mata Hari, was a Dutch exotic dancer accused of being a double agent. Though she always denied being a spy, in 1917 she was executed by the French. The most decorated American of World War I, Alvin Callum York, after leading the successful attack killing a lot of people and capturing many more, returned home with a medal of honor, a promotion to sergeant, the French Croix de Guerre, and the gift of 400 acres of good farmland. On the other hand, the Black Rattlers, or Men of Bronze, famously known as the Harlem Hellfighters, were one of the few African-American units that saw the front lines. For the extraordinary acts of heroism, they received the French Croix de Guerre, a medal awarded to soldiers from allied countries for bravery in combat. However, in the US their deeds were ignored, they didn't get 400 acres of good farmland. The first battle fought by the US troops was on November the 2nd, 1917, in the trenches at Belmont, France, long after the war have seen its greatest loss of life. During the Battle of Somme, the British army saw its greatest single loss of life in history when its army suffered 60,000 casualties in one day. More British men were killed in that one World War I battle than the US lost from all its armed forces and the National Guard combined. A renegade pilot, Frank Luke, the balloon buster, claimed 18 victories in total. On September 19, 1918, he downed three balloons but was fatally injured in the process. Ernst Judith was Germany's second greatest flying ace, claiming 61 victories. He would enjoy a playboy lifestyle after the war. However, he re-enlisted in World War II and committed suicide in 1941 during Operation Barbarossa. There were also decorated animals in the war. A pigeon named Cherami was awarded the Croix de Guerre avec Palm for her assistance in saving 194 American soldiers trapped behind German lines in 1918. She made it back to her loft despite being shot through the breast, blinded in one eye, covered in blood and with a leg hanging only by a tendon. Fortunately, the pigeon wasn't eaten. In Britain, killing, wounding or teasing a homing pigeon was punishable with six months imprisonment. This came into force after the defense of the Realm Act in 1916. A lot of horses were used in World War I, approximately 8 million of them died. Because so many horses were enlisted, Lizzie the Elephant was used to cart munition in Sheffield. Sergeant Stubby, a Boston Bull Terrier, was the most decorated dog of the war and the only one to become sergeant. Stubby was very useful for detecting incoming shellfire, hearing it before humans could. On the first day of the Battle of Verdun, 7,000 horses were killed by shelling and roughly 1 million dogs died in the war. Dogs were used for sniffing out enemies, carrying supplies, delivering messages, finding the wounded, carrying telegraph lines, and companionship. There were also cats on the front. Peter the cat served at the front from 1914 to 1918, cats and dogs often being used as mascots for frontline troops. There were also people that didn't want to fight in the war, not many. There were 16,000 British conscientious objectors who refused to fight, some were given non-fighting roles in the war, others were imprisoned. Speaking of being imprisoned, 30 British soldiers didn't like the thought of that. 29 British officers in July 1918, having spent 10 months constructing the tunnel right under the noses of their German captors, attempted an incredible escape. 10 of these officers made the journey to neutral Holland and returned to England as heroes. Only 6 months after the first deployment of tanks on the front line, tanks became available in stores as toys. The female mortality rate rose in Germany from 14.3 in 1000 people in 1913 to 21.6 in 1000 by the end of the war. The biggest rise of any involved countries because of hunger. Hundreds of thousands of civilians died from malnutrition, not directly because they didn't have what to eat, usually from typhus or a disease their weakened body couldn't resist. Starvation was rarely causing death. In both Britain and France, women accounted for around 37% of the industry workforce by the end of the war. The winter of 1916 to 1917 was known as the turnip winter in Germany. That vegetable was usually fed to livestock, but people had to use it as a substitute for potatoes or meat, which were increasingly scarce. Blowing up 8 million horses surely didn't help. By late 1916, the German meat ratio was only 30% of that of peacetime and it fell to 
12 percent in late 1918 the food supply increasingly focused on potatoes or bread becoming harder and harder to buy meat still the war had to end and people had to go home in the next episode we're going to talk about the aftermath of the war for example when soldiers returned there was a baby boom all around the world birds increased by almost 15 percent between 1918 and 1920 during world war one people of german heritage were suspect in the US. Some protests against Germans were violent, including the burning of German books, the killing of German shepherd dogs, and even the murder of one German American. Americans went so far to change food names. American hamburgers, named after the German city of Hamburg, were renamed Salisbury Steak. Frankfurters, which were named after Frankfurt, Germany, were called Liberty Sausages. German language books were burned and schools stopped teaching German. But more on that subject in the next episode. I'd like to thank anybody and everybody that watched this episode. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. I'm Alex, and beware of falling apples.